Okay, we're at a good point now where we can start to talk about some other aspects of testing. Uh, one of the things that we should know about is test-driven development and behavior-driven development, or TDD and BDD. Uh, you'll see uh, BDD talked about in the engineering software as a service textbook, which we haven't actually referred to much this term, um, and certainly as well as test-driven development. I'm first going to talk a little bit about test-driven development and then explain what uh, the basics of BDD are. So test-driven development is an idea that you're going to be able to build better software if you test first. So what does it mean, test first? How can I test something that doesn't exist? Well, the idea, so let's just look at it as a flow chart to start with. So the first thing we're going to do in test-driven development is you're going to write a test. And, well, the idea of this is you know you have to write some sort of functionality in your software. Um, and most of test-driven development, we're talking about testing that's done usually at the uh, unit testing level. Okay, uh, the behavior-driven Development starts instead at the system or end-to-end -end or functional testing, whatever we want to call it, level. Um, but TDD can, can essentially apply at, at any point. All right. The idea, though, is first we're going to express what we want our software to do in the test. What do, you know, what's the... We're going to arrange then we're going to act, and then we're going to assert. And we, we haven't written the actual functioning software yet, but from our understanding about how the software should work, we're going to write a simple test. And usually you pick something that you're like, ah, oh, this is easy. I know that uh, this, if I give it this, it should return that. And you write it, and then you run the test. Okay, and so if you run the test, and you're like, well, <laughs> I know the software doesn't exist yet. Um, and so we ask, we run the test and we ask, does it, does it, does the test pass? And the answer is uh, no. You're going to get a response back from it that tells you, you know, in the, in the first case, usually it's, you've just tried to call some method or class I have no idea what you're talking about. It doesn't even exist. And that's what Ruby will tell you when you do uh, test-driven development. You try to do that in Java or another compiled language, and your test won't even compile, okay? Uh, because it's like you're trying to call code that doesn't exist. How can it link it and compile it? So in those languages, test-driven development, yeah, you wrote the test. Now you got to at, at least write the, the class and the method. You might not put anything in them. They might be empty and blank, but you at least have to have them exist so you can finally get it to compile. And, you know, let's say, it, you know, and again, if it's uh, something like Java and it returns a value, well, you have to return something. So you return something, but you, otherwise it's garbage in there. Or alternatively, you could raise an exception. You could raise an exception inside the method that you're calling and saying, uh, not yet implemented. Okay, so just to be clear, like, I haven't done any work in this method yet. In Ruby, you don't even have to start there. You just say you want to test it, and it'll say, I don't know who this method is, and your test will fail. Okay, so the first thing to do then is to uh, go write some code. So if the test does not pass, so the answer is no, it doesn't pass, your job is to write minimal code. You're going to write the code that you think will get the test to pass. Your job is not to write everything that you could possibly think of in that method, that thing that you're testing. The idea is not to go and do everything. The idea is kind of wonderfully, that mentality is a little bit along the lines of, how can you be lazy? Oh, I wrote this test. Well, uh, the easy way to pass this test is to do the following thing in my method. Okay. 
So you write minimal code, and after you've written your minimal code, which you hope will lead you to pass the test, you go and you run the test again. Does it pass yet? If no, write some more code. You still haven't got it. You're going to keep doing this until, ah, I passed my test. Great. So it's yes, you did pass your test. And now you always ask the question, which is, does the code need refactoring? Now, what does it mean to refactor? Refactor, use my diamond here. It's not the best shape. What does it mean to be refa refactoring? Is you're going to look at your code. So now you have working code that passes a test. And you look at the code and you go, things like, did I use good variable names? Hmm. If not, what you're going to do, uh, so if the answer is yes, you need to refactor. So for example, you did not write good variable names. You say to yourself, yeah, I should refactor this code. I should improve it, basically, without, change, without breaking it. I should clean it up, make it better. So let's say you're going to change variable names. You've got some better variable names. Now, whenever we do that, it's quite possible that you're going to screw up and type something wrong or miss one of the variables somewhere. So the idea is you go, you make those that refactoring change that you decided, and which is that's this is writing the minimal code. This is what you needed to do to refactor it. Then you go back and you run the test again. If it didn't pass, you got to go fix what you're doing. Of course, oh, it does. And you, now you're back here again, and you're like, well, is there anything else that needs to be done? You know, you could even be at the level of, oh, I, you know, I think if I write it this way, it'll be more efficient. So you could have a refactoring there, uh, refactoring, and, you know, you could, that might not be a tiny bit of code, but the great thing is you go and you make a change, you have a test that's going to tell you whether or not your code is still valid is the idea. So eventually you reach the point and you feel comfortable and you say, I think this code is all tip top shape. All right. So it does not need any more refactoring. Well, and the idea is you come back. It's time to write another test. You are most likely not done writing your method yet. You know, for one method, let's say you might write five, six, or more, who knows how many tests. It's very rare that for one piece of code that you need to test, that there's only one matching test. Because each test is supposed to be fairly minimal, test something really in particular, and the idea, so you're gonna need quite a few tests. And you just think about when we've talked about uh, dealing with equivalence classes, so all of those boundaries, all those different interiors, those are all different tests. We've talked about, you know, trying to catch divide by zeros, with, you know, off by ones. There's a whole bunch of things that you're like, I, I think I'm going to need to test this and this and this. And that's just for simple methods. You know, so more complex methods are going to need more testing. Um, and eventually the idea is that you're like, you know, you get to this point, you come back here and you're like, you know, I cannot think of another test to write. Like, I'm all out. I really, I feel really confident and good that through all of my tests and making sure it's passing and refactoring that I've really gone and done a great job here. Okay, so you're done with that method. Well, you're still, you're back to, to write a test and it's like, well, go write a test for some other part of the software now that you need to have working. And you begin keep doing this process on and on and on. And the, at the end result, wow, you have code that you've worked really hard to test. You have a full suite of automated tests. Anytime anyone comes into the system, if they decide that, oh, we need to change or improve something, there's all these checks on all this code. And if they do something wrong, oh, the tests tell them that they violated 
your understanding about the way that code is supposed to work. So this is this is a this is a, a really it's designed to be a really good way to get you to produce a lot of tests and as well it drives the design process for you because if you can't test your code as you're developing it it's a good sign that your code is not very well written okay so testable code has by its very nature often is designed well it tends to be small it tends to be encapsulated it tends not to have lots of dependencies that and so by doing the testing before you're writing the code or at least alongside it you end up with often better designed code um, so that's what test driven development's all about what's uh behavior driven development well behavior driven development basically says, you know, you're going to come out here and you're going to first, so you don't start with your TDD, okay? Basically, you start with, you know, write a system test or a functional or end-to-end -end test, all right? And then the idea is you've written this, and so it might say something like, uh, as a user, when I go to the home page, I should see it say welcome to me. And you could write that as a system test, right? No problem. Get out your uh, capybara, write your systems test, great, or whatever system you're on. It's sort of that user interface level end-to-end -end testing. Well, you write that and you haven't, I mean, you haven't written that part of the system yet, you're expressing the behavior of the system. So you haven't written that yet. Well, the idea is, well, the test fails. So when the test, you know, so you go and you run the test. And when the test fails, the idea is, oh, I'm going to come over here. The idea is, so the test fails, I'm just going to say, and then you go into TDD. Okay, well, my user acceptance test, uh, my system test, whatever I want to call it, that talks about the behavior that the user sees doesn't work. Well, that means you got to go write some internal code now. All right, so basically you, you work with inside of, you could do this TDD loop, you do this TDD loop, you do this TDD loop, you keep doing it, you keep doing it, keep doing it. And you know what? Eventually the system test also passes and you're like, that's great. And then BDD says, now go write another uh, system test. And oh, it doesn't work either because of course you haven't built it yet. So then dive down into your TDD do that, keep doing it, doing that, doing that, and eventually you'll get the system test to pass. Great, and you keep doing it. So that's basically what behavior-driven development is. Now, it, the BDD enthusiasts might not like that description. They're probably gonna say, you know what? BDD is so much more than that because what it, we're really trying to do is to get people to focus in on thinking at the user level and the client and acceptance criteria and drive the design of the system through conversations with the client and embed it all into the testing world. Sure, absolutely. We want to do that no matter what. So I, mean, I actually think that behavior-driven development is the, the, the basic notion of it is of course correct. We need to understand the people using our system, understand our client, understand what they want. And yes, we need to actually write those acceptance tests. We need to have the system tests to make sure that we're meeting those, those needs. Um, that's all, that's absolutely part of the process. Do you want to call it behavior-driven design? Sure, that's fine. Um, do I need to use Cucumber to do that? No. Do I need to do anything special? Do I, you know, so the answer is no, okay? 
So I, I don't think there's any special sauce really to behavior-driven development unless you had happened to be a development team that wasn't operating in this fashion already. So if you weren't actually paying attention carefully to what the client was, if you weren't creating acceptance criteria and verifying the acceptance criteria is being met as you develop your stories for the user, uh, for the client, yeah, adopting BDD will be a huge revolutionary change because you'll start to do those things. But you don't necessarily need to, I, so in other words, yes, behavior-driven development is the way to do things, but do you really need to write a failing system test first? I don't know. Likewise, do you really need to write your test first and then go through this cycle? You know, it's good practice. It's really nice. The writing the test first really makes you think about the code that you're going to have to write. If you can't think about how to test it, how in the world can you write the code? So doing test first is a very good exercise and it, it will actually, it will help you drive better design. Do people always do it this way? The answer is no. It's really quite possible that you might actually write some code and then you write a test and then you see, oh, it passed. Then you write another test, oh, it passed. Then you write another test, it passed. Oh, you write another test, oops, it failed. And you fix it. Oh, you write another test. Now I think I've done all the testing I need to do. All right, I'm gonna go on and write some more code. Um, I think there's a lot, there's a big spectrum here, but the most important thing that TDD teaches us, I mean, so I think, you know, the TDD, you know, takeaways, if I was to say anything, is, you know, test first, I think, can drive better designs. So if you're trying to, if you're, if, if you have doubts or, you know, you're not the world's most experienced developer yet, probably trying and working with test first will actually help you uh, design better code. Give it a try. So write the test first, then write the minimal code and do, the, do that TDD loop. I think it'll probably help, help you and it'll, it'll actually develop you um, to becoming a much better uh, software developer. Now, that's good. The other thing, I think TDD, the really big takeaway is do testing, uh, you know, at the same time you are coding. Okay, so basically, Code a little. I don't know, I'm losing my mind here. So basically, code a little, then test and loop. Okay? You should absolutely always be writing code where you do a little bit of code and then you test it. And you write a little bit more code and you test it. Of course, if you want to, again, write your test first, do a little bit of code, back and forth. You know, it sometimes is easier to write a little bit of code than write a test to see, did it, what I just wrote, is it actually working? Does it do the right thing? What you don't wanna do is write a lot of code and then try to test it or write a lot of code and not test it. Both of those are bad. Writing a lot of code and then testing it is really bad because of two things. One, you're likely to not have enough time to write a bunch of tests. So you're probably not gonna write up because you spent all this time writing a code. Now it's the end of the project. I gotta turn in my work. 
I got to submit it. You're probably not going to write enough tests if you write any at all. So that's bad. You got to do it hand in hand. Develop and keep equal amounts of time to the coding and testing. And again, you're probably going to write more way more tests than, than code. So that's not going to be good for you. And the other thing that happens if you put off the testing is you write a bunch of code. A bunch of code usually means a bunch of bugs. So you start to test it. Uh, I found a problem. I found a problem. Well, this problem cascades and causes other problems. And it's just a big, gigantic mess. But if you wrote a little bit of code, and when I mean a little bit of code, I really mean I wrote like two lines of code. I wrote a line of code. I wrote a loop, a simple loop. I did a little bit of code. Now I test it. If something doesn't work, where's the problem? I, all I changed was that. So now it's broken. Well, what did I do? It's got to be somewhere in what I just did. So that's, the, that's probably the, the nicest thing is creating this, this new behavior in you, which is write a little bit, now test. Keep going back and forth, back and forth. Our tools are so fast today that this is really feasible and possible. It's not like you have to wait forever for like a compile or something. Um, you are able to just go back and forth between writing a little bit and testing and making sure it's going to work. Um, you know, it's kind of like trying to, to let's say you're, you're building something and you need a part to fit in to the place. One way to do it is to, you know, spend a huge amount of time and try to carefully, carefully cut that part to be just the right size to fit. The other way is cut a little bit off. Test it, does it fit? No. Cut a little bit off. Test it, does it fit? Cut a little bit off. Test it. Cut a little bit off. Test Ah, hey, it fits. Perfect. That's what you really want to get to is just do a little bit of code and test. And it pays a lot to build up the automated test suite. Um, yeah, especially, by the way, if you guys are working on your functional user tests, you're going to be, you get, it's, you're going to get tired really fast of like typing in usernames and passwords and clicking and doing that. Automating that stuff is just such a huge time saver. Um, it's, it's fabulous. Now, should you do BDD and write your functional tests, uh, your system tests first? Give it a try if you want. Personally, I find it a little bit easier to get something up and running. I mean, like to pull up the server and click, and, hey, I can see it. That's nice. I've loaded some seed data. Hey, so I already have stuff there. I can see, is it displaying, is it displaying? And I can work back and forth with, you know, changing my, uh, my, if I'm, so I'm usually at the stage of I'm working on the view, trying to get things to display correctly in Rails. Good, it finally looks like it's working now. Now stop. Before I go any further, now go write that system test. Write all the system tests I think I need now to make sure that this user interface is right. Um, I, I, it's a little bit tricky, I think, to start and write the test before you have any sort of user interface uh, actually displaying. And one of the reasons is, is we know that when writing systems tests, that it can actually be better, for example, to find those input fields based upon the cascading style sheet IDs. So the IDs for the elements. Well, when you're dealing with Rails, often those IDs aren't, aren't known to you until you actually view the source. So if you can get the view like doing something and then view the source so you can see what those IDs are. And then you can actually code the input to the IDs or you can go into your view and when you make those elements, set the IDs. So rather than just searching by text, you can search by the ID and you can, you can build a little bit often a little bit more robust systems test. But again, this can be really good for driving design test first. I highly recommend giving it a try and seeing, seeing how it goes for you. It'll be a little difficult at first, but it can, it can actually be sort of exciting to, to give it a try, write the test, fails, go write some code, it's pretty nice. 
But when I talk about test-driven development or even behavior-driven development, I think, but test-driven development in particular, the really big idea is code a little, test a little. They need to go hand in hand and your tests, you really should be striving to get those tests written down into to automated tests. Big takeaway for BDD, I think, really is you should be focusing on the customer. You should have acceptance criteria. You should be writing tests that verify the acceptance criteria has been met. That's the big takeaway for BDD. But we expect that as good developers anyway. So if you want to call it BDD, call it BDD. Um, but this, I, this is something that I find uh, uh, new developers in particular need to spend more time on to get in the habit of write a little, test a little, uh, and then to actually capture those tests in automated tests. And so yeah, try test first. All right.